Hi, Dilly Holy Universe, and welcome to NXT. Now, this is actually post time Preston, and the reason for that is because I just realized that I just recorded two episodes of this without any dialogue because I had my thing on mute. But, um, the good thing is I noticed it right now. Um, for the second video, the other one's not gonna have audio. Um, this one is, but we're gonna go through here and we're gonna see that Outlaw wins, Connor wins, Tyson Kidd wins, and then I come in and I'm attacking Simon Gotcha and I show you right here, it's because there is no Jaden Jet match. And because Jaden Jet's not in a match, I can't wrestle him, or not wrestle him, I can't attack him. And the funny thing about this is Simon Gotch, I also attack him at main event. And you'll see why that's funny in a minute. But yeah, Simon Gotch versus Bo Dallas. On the hype train. Up oh, and here we go. Starting off and... There he is, strutting around the ring. Yeah, look at me, I won. And here comes Crochet. Crochet comes out. He's like, oh, God, Crochet. Oh, boom, right in the mustache. And he's like, oh, no, my mustache face. Oh, God, why'd you do this, Crochet? And Crochet's like, I'm going to take you all the way over here. And hit you with bam. Go off against the ropes. And he tiki missile. And I thought that would be it. But uh, apparently it's not. So I decided to give him a crochet needle. And that actually does the trick. Um, he goes down like a sack of potatoes. Uh, I hope you guys don't hear my bed there. But I just sat down in my bed. Um, I did a lot of talking here um, about my wrestling DVDs, actually, which is kind of funny because I was like, okay, we're here against Finn Balor. Actually, no, I don't talk about it here. I talk about it at the main event, but not the main event, at the pay-per-view, which is Brooklyn again. By the way, what the fuck? I thought we were going to get, like, four Dallases. Now we're back to Brooklyn. What the hell, guys? Um, but I was, like, looking, I was, like, talking about Owen Hart, and... I was like, I wonder where my Owen Hart DVD is. I don't see it on the shelf. I was looking at my shelf. I'm like, where's my Owen Hart DVD? And then I finally found it. And it's literally, uh, another DVD I mentioned was, I was like, I have a Rock DVD too. Where's that? And they're literally, literally right next to each other. <laughs> side by side. The Rock, uh, Most Electrifying Man Sports and Entertainment. And Owen Hart, Heart of Gold. Which I'm actually going to watch that tonight. Um... Then I have my Randy Orton DVD, uh, really good. We're up here against Finn Balor, former uh, NXT champion, former Universal champion, finally back on Raw. Glad to see him back. But I was like, yeah, I haven't seen the Owen Hart DVD. I'm like, I'm more into the documentary portions of those DVDs. And my favorite thing about the Rock one is they split the documentary portions in between matches. Like, uh, they would talk about where he was during that moment of his career. Um... And what I like about the old, newer ones, rather than the older ones, the newer ones, um, uh, they don't, uh, they show every good match, not just the ones they win, which as the Rock one, they showed all the ones that he actually won, not just the really good ones they lost. Um, maybe Stone Cold's on there, uh, the one he lost to Stone Cold at, but I don't know. But I remember my fi favorite one is they put a Raw match on there because I guess it was made around the time Eddie Guerrero died. And they were like, and this is when he fought the late, great Eddie Guerrero in a one-off match. Like, they didn't they didn't say that was a one-off match, but it was not like a... Like, it was a great match. It was a really good match. There was a great spot where Eddie Guerrero reverses the um, rock bottom by, like, doing an arm drag or something. He, like, leaped, leapt into the air and did an arm drag. And I really loved it because those two are, like, my two favorite wrestlers of all time, Eddie Guerrero and The Rock. Um, but... Along with Owen Hart, too. Um, but I remember watching him, like, yeah, this was made around the same time A. Guerrero died because there's really no point for this match to be. Because like, like, it's not, like, a really iconic match. And it's not, um. 
it's it's like it's a really good match, but it's not like one of the Rock's best matches. It's like they just put it on there because this is the time he fought a Guerrero who just died, which is really funny to me. Um, not funny, haha, but like, really, you did that. But um, the best part about that is like they're talking about this is when he fought the late great iconic Eddie Guerrero, and it's like this was a one-off match on Raw. <laughs> Really good one-off match on Raw, but like he's had better one-off matches on Raw, like the one he had against Jeff Hardy. That was a really good one. The Rocks fought a lot of wrestlers. Like everybody gets Triple H a shit, but like he had a really good match with Takamichi Noku too. The fair part about that match is when um, Taka comes out with uh, Funaki. And they stand on the apron, and uh, hold the X, are laughing at him. Then all of a sudden, they look behind him, and here comes the APA. They paid the APA to come out and made sure the uh, DX didn't fuck up everything. But yeah, that, that's that's like my favorite thing about the Rock one is that they splice in um, the documentary into that. But uh, with the newer ones, they'll show like matches that they actually lost instead of just all matches that they won. Like, the John Cena one I also have, my sister got for me for, uh, I think my Christmas or birthday? I meant, I meant to say my birthday or Christmas, but <laughs> it came out my Christmas or birthday. Um, and that one's okay. Um, I remember I, like, tried to watch the documentary portion, but there was something really off about it. Like, there was just something like, we're painting this picture of John Cena, not showing you John Cena. Um, the Randy Orton one felt really real, um, because they talked about how he deserted the, um, Marines, or the Army, and how he, uh, fucking, uh, couldn't find a job, and how when he started out at WWE, he was kind of a shithead. <laughs> like, they really laid into him, and he laid into himself, but it was a really good one. Um, I actually have that one, too. Rise of Fall WCW, I haven't actually, wa actually watched. Um, it's funny, my John Cena one's next to his movie Legendary. Um, and that movie is actually pretty good. I think it's the wrestling one, the high school wrestling one. Either that or it's I Am Legend that's right next to him because I can't really see. All I can see is Ledge. Because my bookshelf's really far away. It's probably Legendary. I don't see I Am Legend on my shelf anymore. Maybe I sold it. Actually, really can't find that. Where is it? I am Legend. I have book of I have book of Eli still on there. Oh no, I see where. No, that's not I am Legend. You can see how much I care about this match. <laughs> you see how much I care about this career mode because um, during this match I was just like, yeah, we're beating up uh, Finn Balor, trying to get that five star rank so we can get to the tag team titles. And I'm like, really? Come on, man. You couldn't just throw in a storyline for me to do this? Jesus. We're at number two. We should be eligible. <laughs> Maybe I Am Legend is on the other side. I don't know. We're not going to look for I Am Legend. Actually, I feel like I should. I feel like that should be my challenge here. To tell you guys if I found I Am Legend on my shelf. I think it's still in alphabetical order. If it is, yeah, I see it there. It's next to Indiana Jones. But yeah, I also have the Randy Orton one. The Randy Orton one, they had a few good matches on there. Um, my favorite thing that they had on there, they had one of his uh, OVW matches against John Cena, actually. Which was really good. I wish they would have spliced in um, history on that. Like, history about his OVW uh, life. Rise and Fall of WCW, I really want to watch that. Um... Don't know if I should watch that or heart, or, or Owen Hart, Heart of Gold. I don't know. Owen Hart, Heart of Gold seems like the better choice because when it came out, I literally was working at Walmart at the time, and I was walking to go back to the front desk. And I was like, uh, I hate my job, I hate my life, and I turn my head. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> when did this happen? Because it was like a brand new DVD. And it was. WCW Seal on an Owen Hart TV. I'm like, and I was thinking possibilities there because I was like, there's a DVD of Owen Hart, which means they got a deal with his wife, which means he could be going to the Hall of Fame soon. 
And I was like, which means he could be in a video game soon. I was like, oh, and Hart in a video game in the Hall of Fame. That would be the greatest. And then all of a sudden, Crochet does a flip, hits a DDT. Um, but then all of a sudden, once, it, uh, once I got it and the Hall of Fame came around, I'm like, oh, Wayne Hart, oh, Wayne Hart, no Wayne Hart. And then Hall of Fame coming around next year. Oh, Wayne Hart. Oh, Wayne Hart. No, Owen Hart. Then, oh, and then Hall of Fame came around this year, and I was like, Owen Hart's not going to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I was so expecting him to be in the, like, one of the wrestling games, too. What made me mad the most was he wasn't in the wrestling game that he should have been in. They talked about him, but he wasn't in the one with the Austin um, showcase. Because, here's the thing, I really like Austin, but like when they were talking about the... Um, the the Heart Foundation stuff with him, I was kind of taken out of it because, like, this big thing was his neck injury against Owen Hart, and that would have been a cool, like, yeah, it would have been shitty to play that out, but, like, it would have been a cool thing to play out, him getting his neck injury and showing that in all the CGI glory and getting glorious Owen Hart in the game. But I don't know. He's actually, if you check on the Amino, on the Wrestling Amino, um, I actually did, I am, I'm, I'm pressing you on there too, I think. I change my Amino names from time to time because I get bored. Um, but my um, Amino, I did um, Amino Hall of Fame, where I did polls on there to vote. And you can actually submit for people to be in the Hall of Fame next year to be in a poll. Um, there's six categories, actually seven now, because I had indie careers and Indie wrestlers and careers, which meant means like if you wanted to submit J CM Punk's indie career, you can. If you want to submit uh, CM Punk as a wrestler, you can. So that means two people can be in a separate um, 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 Hall of Fames, like kind of like how the whore for the whore horsemen, <laughs> the four horsemen um, are in the Hall of Fame, and so is Ric Flair. But yeah, this year um, we got the Dudley Boys in there. This is the starting year, so we got the Dudley Boys in there, Test, um, China, uh, Motorhead, Jim Johnston, and Owen Hart was the main eventer. Um, ironically, at first, because like I didn't have Cordy Garriers at first, I was just making uh, polls to see who would be in, who could be in the Hall of Fame for WWE. And I was like, here's one for people who probably wouldn't, would be overlooked because they weren't that popular or something. And I had Test in there, Crash Holly. Um, there was a few other people that I I really liked. Um, then I had a women's one, then I had a celebrity one, and a non wrestling one. A tag team one. And it's funny because I was looking through it. I was like, who should be in the Hall of Fame this year? And I was looking at all the names. And I was like, I should do this for Amino. And that's when the idea sparked up. But then as soon as I started making categories, I'm like, did I just put a non-main eventer, Owen Hart, in the main event uh, slot? Then I looked up his title career. And he's actually been uh, main event champions. By the way, we just beat Finn Balor. And he's actually been some main event champions uh, a couple times. Uh, he was a main event champion, I think, in Stampede and a few other wrestling promotions. So it kind of fits. You know, he's still a main eventer then. He main evented other promotions, but not in WWE. Um, but now the categories are main event, um, mid card. Mid card or lower card. Um, it doesn't matter. Like, like say you did want to put Crash Holly in there, you could. Because I would count that as mid card. Basically anybody who's never been in the main event. And I, I don't count Bobby Holly as a main eventer just because he main evented against, uh, Brock Lesnar. Then again, I don't really count Owen Hart as a main eventer either because he wasn't main eventer in um, WWE. But like, you can make an excuse that everybody's a main eventer because they main evented some indie promotion at some point in their career. But um, there's main eventer, mid card, uh, celebrity, non wrestler, tag team slash faction. Um, women's and indie wrestler slash career so if you're on amino go in to amino go to preston yui spelled p-r-e-s-t-o-n capital u i-e and you'll see that there's a sheet on how to uh submit people you send them through saying it to me through a pm on 
Amino. Um, you put in the wrestler, the category, and the reason why they should be in the Hall of Fame. And who knows? Maybe if uh, maybe if I like the reason, or maybe if enough people will submit one guy, they'll get on a poll for next year. But if nobody submits anything, that means I have to make it all up myself. Ugh. That sounds like a doozy. But here we are. We're at the NXT Brooklyn again. And this time we're going to face, not face, well we are facing someone, we're facing Simon Gotch, which is the funny thing that I was going to mention, uh, we beat up Simon Gotch at, this is basically a rivalry that started with one week, we beat him up at the beginning of the week, at NXT, then at main events, which you guys didn't see because I don't show main event anymore, because it's boring, um, but then again, NXT is getting boring now because they won't put me in a rivalry, and it's all just about trying to boost my fucking status, um, then we face uh, Simon Gotch here. And right now we're going to enter Outlaws match for Brody Tyson. So here we go, start of the match. This one actually took a long time, which was weird because I fought Brody Tyson at main event and I injured his uh, stomach area. Like, I got him all the way to the white. Here comes Outlaw. Brock lesnar -ing it. But yeah. That's the Mino Hall of Fame for you. We got Test in there. We got the Dudley Boys. And the Dudley Boys don't just consist of Bubba and... Devon. Um, I added Spike in there too. I didn't add the other ones because there's like a million of them. But I, I figured Spike, Dudley, Bubba, and Devon are the three main Dudley boys. So all three of them get into the Hall of Fame. Um, I really liked uh, making the uh, images for them, especially for the wrestlers, because the wrestlers have, um, like, if you search them on Google, they have, like, cropped out images where they don't have a background. So I put them in the background of this Hall of Fame thing, and it looked really nice. Um, for the celebrities, though, I was like, come on, dude, there's not one um, motorhead without a background, and there wasn't, and it sucked. I couldn't even find Lemmy without a background. Um,. You can find them with a white background, but, like, that's not just without a background. I mean, like, for it to come up, it has to come up on my phone with, like, a checkerboard background. That means there's nothing back there. Um, that's just the image of the person. And, uh... What else can I say? Oh, and Jim Johnston... Well, of course he didn't have one without a background, but... I always feel pissed that Jim Johnston doesn't get into the Hall of Fame, because, you know, without Jim Johnston, how cool would uh, Undertaker or The Rock's entrance be? How cool would uh, any wrestler's entrance be, other than, like, Triple H and that, who actually use music? Like, I had this all recorded. Like, it's so... I don't like being posted on Preston because, like, I can't just pretend like I'm there playing the game. This actually started to piss me off because, um... This is actually not where... Ah, uh, sorry, it pissed me off. It pissed me off that it was taking so long, but this is where I started looking at my shelf and talking about movies. Um, like, Legendary. I was like, Legendary's not that bad of a movie. It's a John Cena movie, but, you know, I enjoyed it. It was about high school wrestling. Which was weird because John Cena is definitely not a high school wrestler. Um, a lot of DVDs on my shelf that I haven't watched. Like, I have the Max Payne DVD, which I heard sucked. But I was like, eh, you know, 
it was like uh, a buck. <laughs> so pick it up, why not? I mean, any shitty movie is worth a buck. Any shitty action movie is worth a buck to me. I'll pay a buck to own a shitty movie. Because, I mean, when you pay a buck to for something that isn't that good, but you probably find some kind of enjoyment out of it, that's not that bad of a movie. <laughs> that's the thing. Everybody always says, like, when you spend more money, you force yourself to enjoy it more than the guy who doesn't. But to me, it's the exact opposite. If, like, something sucks and I spent, like, a lot of money on it, I get pissed easily. I get, like, really pissed. I'm, like... Like, I can see what they're talking about. Like, psychologically, you would want to, like, try to justify the fact that you spent money on it. But not me. I'm just like, nope. I, I just spent money on garbage, and I'm mad. <laughs> but, like, when I spend less money on something, or when I get something for free, and it's not that good, I'll be just like, yeah, you know, I can't really argue with free. Can't really, uh, complain when it's only a buck. But yeah, it always it missed me why this match was taking so long. I'm like, he has two reversals on you, outlaw. He's got nothing in anything. He's probably got injured ribs because I just kept on crocheting elbow him. Because the whole point of me like getting him right to the white in um main event is because I wanted to see if I can injure somebody in career mode. And I don't think you can. Maybe you can get injured, but I want to talk about career mode for a minute here, which funny talk about career mode and career mode who oh, all blasphemy um but i want to talk about it for a minute here my goal for career mode is get these tag team titles then go straight to the top title not the nxt title the wwe title and i want to get the wwe title and i want to hold it for eight years that's my goal because i want to get past the um um what's his name bruno san martino mark like, I literally, like, it's not a joke. I'm not playing around. I want to get to that title. I want to hold it for eight years. Um, then after that, who knows? Um, I just feel like that would be the coolest thing to say my character is the longest reigning ever WWE Champion. So that is the goal. Um, I will probably... I'm probably gonna try to get Jade and Jet. Like if, like if this thing keeps going on the way it does, and if I'm struggling to go up in the rankings, I'm probably gonna keep on trying to get Jade and Jet to the title first, so I can beat him for it, and then just beat everybody else. <laughs> no one will become champion but me. Probably do run-ins at pay-per-views on other championship matches to change the title there. Like, that's just my ultimate goal. I'll probably move, like, to make the goal even stronger. Because, like, I don't know if you noticed, but the, I don't think the, I don't think my settings on, um, career mode are legendary. I think I have them on, um, what do you call it? I think I have them um, normal, I think, maybe, but... If I get the title, I'll definitely boost the settings to Legend and try to win every match that way on Legendary mode. I'm not going to go for 5 star rankings, but like, going to be WWE Champion for a long, long time. But Outlaw wins. Jay and Jet's our friend again for some reason, even though we beat the crap out of him a lot. And I noticed we didn't get any popularity points for this, which was weird to me, because I was like, okay, why are we not, you know, rising up? I was like, we should be, uh, getting max popularity here. Which I don't think it actually works the way the thing I read online works. It's... Oh, I just got an audio thing. 
I just got audio from the mic from um the actually when I was recording this. I guess I was messing with this the switch thing that switches the mute, but I didn't notice it. Um. But yeah, another thing. Uh. Another thing I wanna do with career mode is uh. I want to drop the tag team belts to Vic Listo. I think I've said this already. And that's basically it. I don't have any other goals. Um, I think after my eight year championship run, I'm going to drop down to the mid card. <laughs> and just uh, dominate the mid card after that. But, like, I don't know who I'm going to lose it to after my eight year championship run. I don't know. I don't want to lose it too. Like, let's let me look up who um, like like really quickly, because I know it's like seven years and something months his uh, Bruno San Martino's run. But what's his combined run? Google. Hold on. I'm back. Okay, never mind. Google. I don't know what the fans are chanting, but Aiden English comes out, and I really believe that he was in my corner in this match because he starts clapping whenever I reverse and shit, which is really funny to me. Did Martino ever have a championship? I don't think he did. He sucked. <laughs> um, but just like thinking maybe in the Indies or in the other promotions he had a championship maybe. I don't know. I don't say Martino was the tag team champion. Twice. With three different people. Actually, three times with three different people but with three different tag team championships. Got bronze statue. Okay, let's see. Bruno San Martino was the longest reign of 2,803 days. Jesus. Is that really seven years? Yeah, that seems about right. Seven years. What's the combined range? Combined range. Bruno San Martino's on top with 4,000 days and two championships. It goes San Martino, two reigns, 4,000 days and 4,040 4, days. That goes Hulk Hogan. 2,185 days. You can tell how much I care about this match because it's a nothing match that was made for like one fucking week. There we go. We're going to do a Fanny Splash. Enjoy that. Um, and then Bob Backlund, two reigns for 2,138 days. I don't know if we're going to do over 4,040 days. Uh, get one championship reign that's longer than the They have longest reigns not combined. I don't see longest reigns not combined. Let's see where CM Punk is. CM Punk, 462 days to 
with two championship reigns. Randy Savage did better with you than Kamai Reigns. You're only number 12, CM Punk. Randy Orton, who is the current champion with nine title reigns, six, 61, or not 61, six, uh, 611 days. That's the shortest amount. Andre the Giant has the shortest uh, reign, which was... Andre the Giant and Rey Mysterio have the tied because they were taking hold of her. This is something I actually said in one of my videos that wasn't recorded that I hate about John Cena. Is that he does that thing about the Money in the Bank, um... Where he t says, uh, the Money in the Bank, um... The Money in the Bank champ, uh... Holder only catches in the belt, and, or not catches in on the belt, and doesn't really earn it. It's like one they fucking went through a terrifying ladder match. So shut your mouth. They did earn it. Are we at the end of the match? No, just at the point where I catch him. Um. But uh, he says that. But that Rey Mysterio reign that was only less than a day was because he beat me. me Oh, the recording stopped while I was talking about it. was because he beat The Miz in a tournament. Like, it was like a culmination of a tournament that day. And it was just right about when CM Punk decided to leave um, the WWE that he came back uh, with the title. But Rey Mysterio beat The Miz at the end of the tournament and won the WWE Championship. And then that very same night, not lying to you, John Cena wants to have a match with Rey Mysterio for the championship. This is my Marl Ronaldo voice, even though he wasn't with the company at the time. He wants a title match with the champion. And it's gonna have the title on the line. Okay, hypocrite, you wanna talk about cashing in Money in the Banks? You didn't even have a fucking Money in the Bank then. You just said, hey, I lost the belt at um, Money in the Bank. Let's have another match. Uh, against the guy that I have every advantage over, who is not 100%. And I know wrestling's fake, but like, when he says this shit, it's supposed to be believed that wrestling's real, right? Like, this guy, he got the championship in a cheap way. Uh, uh what? <laughs> you know, like, like, if I could figure out which Raw that was. Um, like, I will definitely link it, because it's always the same bullshit with with John Cena when he says that. It's like, what do you mean they didn't earn it? They earned it way more than you did. But it's so annoying when I hear that all the time. Like, oh, all I did was cash in a briefcase. Well, you didn't even have a briefcase, so what's your excuse? Man, it's so frustrating hearing that. Come on, John Cena's mouth. I hate John Cena. I, I love him and hate him at the same time because he's a great wrestler in the ring, but he's like, his promos are the same shit over and over again, like his Miz stuff, where he's like, oh yeah, all Miz does is copy everybody else. Well, fucking Miz pointed out the same thing I've been pointing out for years, is that John Cena didn't invent a fish drop and a fireman's carry. <laughs> Neither did he invent the sunset flip. Probably didn't invent a uh, fucking famous or off the t second rope. Probably didn't invent the springboard stunner. I bet you a Mexican wrestler or a, or a, um, a luchador of some sorts has been doing a springboard stunner for years. Probably better than you have, you piece of shit. Um, but he talks about shit like, oh yeah, you're fucking, you do, all you do is Daniel Bryan's kicks, and I'm like, yeah, but he's doing it to mock out Daniel Bryan. It's part of his story. Like, it's so stupid. Same thing for when he was facing CM Punk. He goes, CM Punk, you stole your the Macho Man elbow. He didn't steal. He's doing it as a tribute, you dick. So he shouldn't do tributes to wrestlers that he respects? 
what an asshole. Like, what are you gonna say when people start doing sharpshooters and shit? He's gonna go up to Natalia and tell her that she stole the sharpshooter from her fucking uncle? I really hope he would say that to, like, Natalia or if they brought back, um, one of the other hearts. Um, uh, what's his name? You know, Bulldog's kid or, uh, Teddy Hart. If they brought them in and they start doing a sharpshooter, if he came came up to one of them, like, you just stole that from Bret Hart. I would love for them to actually like stiff punch him in the face. <laughs> Cause I would if if that was my family's move and you told me like 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 if they hired the Von Erich kids that are wrestling in Japan now. I don't know if they are still wrestling, but if he judged them for doing a claw or a tornado punch, I would hope they put tornado punch him for fucking real and knock him the fuck out. <laughs> But there we go, we just beat Simon Gotch, Simon Gooch. <laughs> Fucking John Cena is bullshit. You stole that from... Eddie Guerrero, the Frog Splash. Shut up. Every move you do is stolen, you haven't innovated anything, you dick. <laughs> Here, I'll go down the line. Fish drop, million dollar man. Um, Fireman's carry, uh, toss. Tommy Dreamer. Springboard stunner, variation of fucking Stone Cold stunner. Um, top rope famouser, I bet you Billy Gunn's done it. Um, sunset flip, literally every cruiserweight ever known to man. God, I hate you, John Cena. Whirly Bird Special, whatever you call it, the Overdriver Turnout Power Bomb. I bet you I can find someone who did that too. That's gonna be it, guys. Um, I check here to see if we go up in the rankings. We don't. We're still at ranking number two. I think once we pass, like, um, I think that's like 700. Uh, I think when we pass 750,000. Uh, people, I think we'll get to the top spot, but like, favorite, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Always remember to stay Yui, and mm, bye. 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 Stop recording. <laughs>